As I said last week, um, I am doing a series of seven sermons from the book of Genesis this winter. Stories that we have been examining in my Tuesday Bible study, which Carol Cobb leads. Bible study where we take a chapter a week and really dig in to the meat of each of these chapters. If you'd like to be a part of that study, it's not too late. Just contact me and I can hook you up to participate at either 2 p.m. or 7 o'clock on Tuesday evenings. So the title of, title of my message this morning is Building Boats That Float. What do you think that message might be about? Anybody? Noah and the Ark. I couldn't believe it this week when somebody who had that title called me to ask me what it was about. But we love you, Tommy. <laughs> According to an email making the rounds these days, Everything you need to know about life, you can learn from Noah. Among his important, most important lessons are these. Don't miss the boat. We are all in the same boat. In troubled times, travel in pairs. When you get stressed out, float a while. And remember, the ark was built by amateurs in the Titanic by professionals. No character in the Bible gets more present day attention than Noah. This great grandson of Edith and grandson of Methuselah has present day water parks named after him and the quick bird satellite looking for the ark. But beyond that, I think there's a lesson from Noah. And that's what I'd like us to take a look at today. One of the most important things to note about Noah is that Noah walked with God. Noah had a relationship with God. Verse 9 says, Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time, and he walked with God. That's a pretty good statement, isn't it? He walked with God. You know, there was a agnostic jogger who used to jog, and when he passed, he got to St. Peter in heaven. And St. Peter said, before you can be let in, you need to tell me the name of God's Son. And the jogger said, that's easy. His son's name is Andy. Because every week when I jog past the Methodist church, they're singing, Andy walked with me, and he talked with me, and he called me by name. There's something to be said about Noah's relationship with God. And that is, when you have a relationship with someone, and you walk with them, you become more like them. 
actually people who contend the longer you walk through life with your spouse, the more you become to look like them. My wife's eternal goal in life is to disprove that thought. But whether you come to look like each other or not, the longer you walk through life with somebody, the more often you can predict how they're going to react, what they're going to think about the situation, and what they're going to bring to the table. And that was important for Noah. Noah wasn't off on his own tangent pursuing his own agenda. He walked with God. Another thing to remember is that not only did Noah walk with God, he followed God's instructions. And my goodness, what instructions he was given. Verses 14 through 16. And God said, So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 450 feet long. 75 feet wide. 45 feet high. Make a roof for it and finish the ark within 18 inches of the top. Put a door on the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. Isn't it interesting how detailed this ark is? But Noah took those instructions and he followed them exactly and to the T. And he built this huge boat, roughly one and a half football fields long, 45 feet high. I'm reminded the first time I walked into this sanctuary with our grandson the day after we moved in. I took his hand and we walked up the aisle and we came and we stood here and his six-year-old eyes looked all the way around this room. And he said, Grant, I guess you got your big boat now. <laughs> From the mouths of children comes sermon. Noah followed instructions and built the boat. How many of you are good at instructions? When we get something, I put it together without the instruction. Then I take it back apart, and I try to do it with the instructions. And then I take it back apart, and my wife builds it perfectly with the instructions. Some of us do a better job of following instructions, while others of us think we can do it better on our own. This good man who walked with God followed the instructions. And so then they all got onto the ark. Sounds like a lot of mucking to me. And I'm not sure whether I'd be want to be on the bottom. 
bottom, the middle, or the top, that I guess it would depend on the direction in which the wind was blowing. But they were on there, and guess what? Because Noah followed the directions, when the flood came, the boat floated. He built a boat that floated by God's instructions. And then, oh, how bad they must have been when the rain ended. The rain ended. They were allowed to get off the boat. And what was one of the first things they saw? God put a bow in the clouds. A rainbow. To promise them that he would never flood the earth again. A rainbow to say, I was with you, I am with you, and I will remain with you. So where am I going for us today? The lessons for Noah, I believe, are the same lessons you and I need to hear today. We need to walk with God. Walk with God and talk with God. Be a friend with God. Listen to his instructions. Listen to his will. Listen to his plan. Talk to him when you're walking with him. To try to figure out what his instructions are for your life. And then when you mess up, and we all mess up and end up in the mud sometimes in life, we even mess up with mud on our face sometimes. But when you do, Think about the rainbow and know that God was with you before, during, and after whatever flood came into your life. Well, as Aiden said, I got my big boat, and my prayer today is that this boat will float, and that we'll all come to see the glory of God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God. I thank you that you are such a loving partner. I thank you that you are able and willing to walk with me. Strengthen each of us as we walk with you to listen to your instructions. Continue to walk with you during the flood and then celebrate the rainbow on the other side. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Thank mm-hmm. you.